Welcome back to Steep in the Woods. I'm Josh. I'm Celia. And this was sent to us by a viewer. I believe the person who sent this, his name is Rebecca. There wasn't a note with this, but in any case, she sent us several things that'll be really useful around here, and I appreciate that very, very much. If it wasn't her, whoever you are, you're awesome too. Inside this weird little cooler is nematodes. Nematodes are crucial here on this property for us. Celia is going to explain more about that at the end of the video, but right now, I'm going to go ahead and mix this up and distribute it around the property, and you can come along with me for that process. Yep, it appears to work. In our particular area, the best time to distribute these nematodes is in the spring and in the fall when the weather is cool and it's raining. It has just rained and it's set to rain again soon. So, that's why this is here. This is, oh, it's peeing on me. Um, one thing you need to be aware of is these nematodes are 100% safe for humans, animals, everything. They only go after insects and they only go after a certain type. There's a bunch of different types of nematodes that you can get based on what your problem is. So what comes in your package, this, this is sent in a really nice, thick uh, uh, cooler here. And what you get is this. It looks like sand, you know. Um, it's set cool and you need to keep it cool because this is a lie. That may look like sand, but it is millions of beneficial worms. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, it's not cheap, but I could see why. Uh, I can only imagine trying to farm and raise just microscopic worms here uh, but that's how it's packaged it's got some information here it comes with ice packs and the shipping is really quick because if you get it you need to use it within about a week you can keep it in your fridge for one to two weeks and then after that these little guys they just die so you need to use it quick uh, timing is everything the ground needs to be wet or it needs to be wet soon um, for us here, it has just rained, and it's set to rain again soon. So this is perfect timing. In case you're wondering, yes, this is the same friggin' knife. I need to get me another one. I need to get me a real man's knife around here. So, that's it. It's cool. You want it to be cool. Uh, you don't want it to warm up. Like I say, these are, these are alive. There really is nothing to it. Just open your package of, like I say, what appears to be sand here, but it ain't. Close your knife down, because that sucker will come back and bite you. Put your lid back on. Real tight. Pump it up now. One of the most important steps is to shake it. You need to shake it really, really well, and you need to continue shaking it as you're distributing it around your property. There's a few things I cannot stress enough when trying to do this is timing. Make sure it is wet and it will be wet. If they dry out, they die. Two, when you receive them, keep them cold. Fridge, not freezing. And three, once you get to this step, you need to constantly be keeping that shaking up because uh, you're gonna wander around. This is good for acres. Um, you're gonna wander around and, and, and you can spray it anywhere. You can spray it right around your house. You can spray it in your yard. What I'm going to do, since we have such a vast area, is I look for places that are wet and that I believe will stay wet and I strategically place them. You need to do this in the spring, 
and in the fall for at least a couple years, especially if you're having a problem like we are. What I'm gonna do with this batch and with all subsequent future batches is look for wet spots. So you look where the moss is growing, I'm putting them around trees on the shady side because it's moist and it should continue to be moist. So like this dead one right here, Some people may have wondered why I stopped clearing out the house spot when I did. I like woods, I want to maintain the woods and help protect the woods. The reason why I stopped where I did though was because I hit some of the monarchs. I cleared out until I got to this tree. There's another tree past it. There's another one down there. Basically, the size of this clearing was the size allowable without cutting down any of these monarchs. I don't believe I have a right to drop a tree this big. It's been here for hundreds of years. It'll be here for another couple hundred. As, a, as, as an organism, as a person, as a part of this world that only lives 70 years, I just don't think it's right to take it upon yourself to kill something that has been here for 400 and could be here for another couple more. It's not right to me. So this is the type place that I'm looking for where there is trapped moisture. This is moist, it should not dry out, whether we get rain or not, although we're supposed to get some. Um, nematodes are not cheap. Um, so I do, like I said, I do this sort of strategic, uh, a little squirt here, a little squirt there versus just trying to douse everything because you really need to get your money's worth. You want these guys to live and they're gonna live here. This is gonna be fine. They'll, they will always be here once we spray them there. Another good place to put the nematodes is up under logs. You know you're not going to move for a while. This is kind of in the way of everything, but I'm not going to be cutting it up tomorrow. So as of right now, it's got plenty of moisture and it will continue to stay moist for at least a while. Up against old stump. Just anywhere, really. I mean, you can't really do it wrong. Um, if you do it, if you put them down somewhere and it doesn't stay moist, you will lose some. But out of, I don't know, 500 million, you know, you are going to, you're not going to lose every single one. But here at Steve in the Woods, we don't have a ton of money to play with. So, we use everything to the best of our ability. I don't want to lose three of them, much less a quarter million. God, you really scared me. I was waving in the, in the background a part of it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. I have sprayed all of it. All around the house, all around the surrounding woodland. I targeted areas of moisture, and uh, uh, that's it. We now have an additional five million troops on the off-grid mountain here but why was it important what what do they do and why is it so special to us to have them so june of last year 
I actually got a tick bite and contracted Lyme disease. Um, it was a bit scary in the beginning, we had lots of back and forth, and um, I was treated very quickly. It did teach us that there are dangers on the homestead. There's dangers everywhere, and you should protect yourself. I did a lot of research on how to repel ticks, on how to get rid of them. Um, there's lots of different options, but the best one that I have found is was nematodes. They're all natural, they're organic, they're just, they're a really easy way to deal with them and they work. We've already sprayed nematodes once before this year and it made a huge difference. So we're just gonna keep spraying to keep combating the tick problem that we do have here. Oh, before we sprayed these nematodes that first time, so they don't, they never bothered me. Uh, 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 it all comes down to like pheromones and whatnot. You gotta understand that ticks don't really have eyes. You know, they, 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 they sense uh, their prey, if, if you will, via other things. So some people just don't have a problem with them, such as myself, uh, but Celia does. And prior to spraying nematodes, it wasn't uncommon for people to come up and get upwards of three or four on them. And we're talking about deer ticks. I mean, I mean the head of a pin. For all I know, I could be covered in them. I'm just always too dirty to know it because they are tiny. I mean, just tiny. So how do you come? Uh, so how do you combat something like that? Well, thanks to Celia, we now know about nematodes. Now we have a multi-pronged approach to this. They're called deer tick because deers are usually the ones that transmit them. That's their main target. But the Lyme disease comes from the white-footed field mouse. So we have two cats, we're going to get a couple more to help control the field mouse population. Also putting up, say, some kind of a fence between our house and our garden and the woods will help keep a distance from the deer to us, as well as the nematodes, and that is the same point in which we found out about permethrin. Another wonderful product, you put it on your clothes, it's good for six weeks, it kills any bugs that land on you, but it doesn't harm you at all. You can use it on children as small as six months old, and you can wash your clothes. It is wonderful. Nematodes are great, and permethrin is awesome. There will be some links down below to both of those, should you feel the need to purchase them for your own homestead. I hope you've appreciated this video and found it informative. There are links below if you want to support the journey. Until next time. Here, Steve in the Woods.